everyone, my name is Tasia and I am a wife to one, mama to two, and stepmama to three. If you are just visiting my channel for the first time, I like to talk a little bit about stepmama advice and lifestyle stuff and share tips and tricks about having a blended family. Recently, I was invited onto the Plus Her podcast. It is hosted by Ann Laurie. She's another amazing veteran stepmother and she has this mission to change the evil stepmom narrative. She had me come onto the show to talk about relationship with the biological mother of your stepkids and how to forge a good relationship, how to set boundaries. It's a really great podcast. I suggest that you check it out and I'm really excited for when that episode airs. But until it does, I thought I would jump on here and dive into one of the topics that we got into and that's about setting boundaries. I do find that when we talk about boundaries, it tends to always focus on your boundary as a step parent and how involved you should be with the kids and like what's your place. And that's a really important aspect for sure. But I think the other thing that a lot of people don't talk about is your boundaries as a stepmother. I think that that's equally as important because it's important that you feel respected and comfortable in your own family. So before I get into this, it's actually really gray and dreary here and cold. So I'm gonna go make some tea and then we'll get into this topic. <music> Okay, so let's talk about boundaries. What do we even mean when we're talking about boundaries? I think boundaries is anything that has to do with what you need to set up in terms of like a parameter or just sort of like a line that you don't want crossed. It's a metaphorical one, of course, that would help make you feel more comfortable in your family, in your own home. It can look like lots of different things for lots of different people. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about in terms of how to successfully set up boundaries as a stepmother is one, you have to actually figure out what your boundaries are. And unfortunately, the only way you're really gonna determine what your boundaries are is they're gonna to have to get crossed. And it's not fun and that kind of sucks, but that's the only really way you're gonna figure these things out. A lot of the time you're not going to really know what those things are until you start to live them and come across them and then those are the things that kind of trigger you and make you realize, oh, that's a pain point for me. The best thing for you to do is just try to brace yourself for the fact that there are going to be boundaries that are going to get crossed for you and sometimes you're not going to know what those were in the first place. So. Don't punish those around you if they end up crossing boundaries because sometimes they might do it innocently. You can't really blame them, especially if you didn't realize that that was a boundary for you in the first place. So I shared this story on the Plus Her podcast, so I'm gonna share it with you guys. This is kind of a silly example of how a boundary or a line got crossed unexpectedly. This happened in my first year of being married and being in my blended family. At the time, my husband and I were working on um, a house. So we have a rental property. We had these nightmare tenants and we had to clean it up and get it ready for the next person. So we were working really hard day and night and we hadn't seen the kids in a bit. So their biological mother offered to drop the kids off for a few hours. So she came by, she said that she was actually gonna go out to the store while the kids were hanging out with us. So she asked very politely if there was anything that we needed. My husband's like, sure, if you can grab this particular cleaning supply. And she's like, cool, I'll grab that when I go to Walmart because I'm gonna grab some socks for my stepson. 
So my husband kind of just looks at me and I was like, oh shoot, socks. Well, he should have brought extra socks today because he was doing some sanding on the walls and the dust was getting all over his shoes and his socks. So she left and we hung out with the kids and did some stuff around the house. And an hour or two later, she comes back to pick up the kids, comes in with her Walmart bag and takes, uh, I forgot whatever cleaning product it was. And she's like, oh, here you go. And so we're like, thanks. And then she's like pulling something else out of the bag. And I'm like, what else is she pulling out of the bag? It was a pack of socks. And she says, oh, hey, I was in the aisle grabbing socks for my stepson. And I realized that you mentioned you also needed some socks. So here you go. I grabbed some socks for you. And she hands it to my husband. And he just looks at it and is like, cool, thanks. Throws it up on the table. And she gathers up the kids. They leave. And I'm annoyed. <laughs> and so my husband was like, what's wrong? And I'm like, well, why would she buy you socks? <laughs> and he was like, uh, you heard the same thing I did. She went to go buy socks for my son. And she heard me mention that I forgot to bring sock, extra socks today. So I think she was just being nice. And I'm like, no, no, she shouldn't be grabbing you socks. And so this is kind of a silly example, but it was something that obviously I would have never expected to happen. There's probably a no universe where it would have ever made sense for her to, you know, grab socks for my husband, but it was just the circumstances. And she was trying to be really helpful because we were working so hard at the house. This is an example of something that was a boundary and a line that was crossed for me, but I wouldn't have known until it actually happened. So. Determining what your boundaries are is the first step to successfully setting up your boundaries as a stepmother. The next thing is to communicate what that boundary is and to communicate it well. What I mean by that is don't freak out when a boundary is crossed. Don't go off on everybody around you. Don't seethe. Don't hold it in and then let it stew and fester for a long time. You might need to step away for a bit and calm yourself down. You might need time to think about it and put it in perspective. You might also need to mull it over of, hey, I've got a lot of battles that I have to fight in this particular situation. Is this particular thing something that I wanna pick a battle about or is this something I can totally let go? And if it's not something you can let go, that's okay too. Just figure out, okay, when is the best way to communicate it and how. Going back to my silly sock story, if I freaked out in that moment and screamed at my husband and called the bio bomb and freaked out on her, that wouldn't have been a good way to communicate that this is something that is an annoyance for me. I didn't do it perfectly at the time, but I tried to calmly communicate to my husband that it's not just about socks, because in his head he was like, it's socks, was the big deal? But in my head I was like, no, I think this is a bit of a boundary. There is a role for me as your wife, there's a role for her as a mother of your kids, and there's been a line that's been like stepped over here. And once I was able to kind of explain it from my perspective, then he was able to see that. I had talked to her about it and mentioned like, hey, this was uncomfortable for me. Not that there was any other circumstance where this probably would have ever happened again, and it hasn't in like the 12 years of my marriage, but I still wanted to make sure that it was clear that it was something that was still a line that was being crossed for me, and I communicated that to her. For her, it was totally innocent. She didn't think anything of it. She was like, oh, I'm totally sorry. I just, I was in the sock aisle. I saw socks. I remember he mentioned he needed socks, so I grabbed them. She's like, you know what? When I look at it from your perspective, that makes total sense. I can see how that's uncomfortable for you. I have no problem, never will happen again. A lot of the times, sometimes we don't share the things that are bothering us and then we wait until the, it's happened how many different times and then we blow up. That's where sometimes the misconception of like the evil stepmom or the angry stepmom comes in because sometimes it's just that we're not communicating what it is that we're not happy about. And if we had just shared it in a positive way, some things can get fixed. Now, I mean, not everything. We all know that it doesn't always work out this way. In my circumstance, I was able to communicate it to the biological mom at a certain point, but not everybody has that opportunity. You might not have a good enough relationship right now to share that with her, and that's all right. You can either work your way up to it, or for now, you just communicate it with your partner and your spouse and stick to that. So. Once you've determined step one, figuring out what your boundaries even are, and two, effectively communicating them in a positive way, step number three 
is to acknowledge the fact that those boundaries can change. Your relationship is going to change. Your family dynamics are going to change. And therefore, what you might have felt as a boundary before might no longer be a boundary anymore. Or new boundaries might pop up as your relationship changes or as your family grows. One really good example of this was when I got into my marriage, I had three stepkids. And for the first five years of my marriage, we didn't add any new kids. In our blended family, don't have a strict schedule. We have a very open situation where our kids can go back and forth whenever they want. There's no court ordered, mandated, anything. That was totally cool with me for the first five years. And then I had a newborn baby. And when I had my son, obviously I went through all the typical normal things that a mom goes through and sleep is detrimental and you're exhausted and you're tired and you're now dealing with nap times and how sacred nap time is. When it came to my two girls, uh, they live with their mom. I just call my kids my kids, but for the reference of the video, I feel I have to indicate when I'm talking about my biological kids and when I'm talking about my stepkids. So I'm talking about my girls as in my stepdaughters. They're the ones who majority go back and forth. My oldest stepson lives with us and then our two biological kids, of course, live with us. Up until this point, they just be like, oh, I wanna go over to mama and dad's house. I'm heading over there by mom and they come over. When I had my son, that is when that boundary started to pop up that I needed a little bit more notice when the girls were coming over because it was just hard. You're like exhausted and not having any sleep. And then two beautiful girls pop into the house full of energy and full of life. And I'm trying to put a baby down to sleep. It was now a bit of a disruption. This was something that I realized like, oh, this was never a boundary for me, but it is now. And first I had to communicate that with my husband of like, listen, it's super important to me that the girls always feel that they can go back and forth and come by the house anytime. However, now I need a little bit of a heads up or maybe a little bit more structure because I have now have this baby that is on this schedule and the slightest thing throws him off or like I can put him down to a nap and he gets woken up by a doorbell. So we have to change things slightly. He's like, I get it, I understand that. And then same thing, I was able to communicate that to the bio mom and let her know like, hey, I just need some more notice now whenever you're dropping off the girls. The fact is, is that being able to acknowledge that your boundaries are going to change and not being sort of like married to the ones you might've set up in the beginning of your family and realizing that you might need to change or adjust those later on in life will make you that much more gracious and then you will have more patience when people end up crossing these new boundaries they didn't know existed and also give yourself a little bit of grace to understand that it's okay if new boundaries pop up you're allowed to have new boundaries don't be afraid to share them just as much as a new boundary can pop up that boundary can go away or change now that i don't have newborn babies in the house we've gone back to having a very fluid organic schedule where like the girls go back and forth whenever they want. It's not such a big deal. I'm not worried about nap time being disrupted. These are just examples of things that you can do to try to like set up those boundaries and have those boundaries be respected and acknowledge that you are allowed to have them and you're also got to be understanding and gracious to other people because they're your boundaries and something that's a boundary for you might not be a boundary for anybody else I hope these tips were helpful to how to set up successful boundaries as a stepmother. Please let me know in the comments below if there's any else on this topic that you'd like me to discuss. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe on my channel below. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.